remember thinking that it was the first real holiday Harden and I'd had together for years. He was going to join me there as soon as he could get away. I was looking forward to it all as though I'd never been out of England in my life before. secretary had traveled with me and even she was impressed. Yes, lovely. Thank you, madame. It is lovely, isn't it, Joan? Yes, it is. Has mademoiselle's room the same view? Yes, madame. Along the corridor. I'll go and see it. I'll meet you downstairs in half an hour. Go ahead. I suppose I was aware that there was an adjoining room. There often are in hotels. But I didn't give a thought to who might be in it or was going to be in it. Why should I? Voila, voila! Oh, attendez une minute! Qu'est-ce que c'est? Bonsoir. Ça y est, merci bien. Il y a une chambre réservée au nom de Strat. Oh, yes, sir. Come in, please. I'm sorry, sir, but we expected you earlier. Yes, I'm very late. I missed the connection. Oh, it does happen, you know. Mm. The room is ready. It's number six. Is it all the baggage? Yes, that's all. This way, sir, please. The kitchen is closed, but if you were hungry, I could perhaps find you something. No, thanks. No, I had dinner on the train. Oh, good. I remember hearing a faint Sorry, murmur of voices. That's all. I've been reading in bed. I must have been half asleep. The curious thing was that although I hadn't seen him for nine years, I was thinking about him at that very moment. I wonder what I'd have done if I'd known he was only a few feet away. Panicked? Run away? No. I'd have wanted to see his face and hear his voice. Instead, I lay there in the dark, thinking. Thinking of a New Year's Eve, nine years ago.
most extraordinary thing happened. What? I met Mary. She's here somewhere. It's funny, isn't it, after all these years? Let's dance. It's a curious sight, isn't it? I wonder how many there are. Thousands. It's a curious noise, too. Very. You know, my dear, they all look as if they are suspended by invisible wires from the roof. That makes four. Four what? Men dressed as skeletons. One of them's dancing with the Gainsborough lady who keeps losing her hat. Over by the centerpiece, then. It's difficult to pick out anybody in particular. How was she? Mary? She's fine. They're in a box somewhere. Would you like to beat her? Yes, I would. What happened to the others? Are they dancing? They're trying to, I think. Do you think we ought to go and dance ourselves? Or would you sooner watch? Enjoying yourself? Very much. Here she is. Stephen Stratton. Oh, yes, of course. How are you? How do you do? You don't know Miss Moore, do you? How do you do, Miss Moore? How do you do? How do, you do? How do, you do? Uh, we met in New York, didn't we? No, Burn Moore, five years ago. Oh, yes, of course. Nice to see you again. Thank you. you excuse me? These things get more crowded every year, don't they? Mary! Mary! Can we drop you anywhere? No, thanks. We're walking. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Mary. Good night. Good night. Happy, New year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You must dine with us sometime. We'd love to. Good night. Good night. Good night. You know, it's awful. I couldn't remember his name. It's Justin. He's a banker. High finance and that sort of thing. He's terribly rich, too. He seemed very nice, I thought. I hardly knew him. Are they happy? I think so. It's the sort of life Mary wanted, so they ought to be. Was she very much in love with you, Stephen? I used to think so. Anyway, she married him. He's the biologist, isn't he? I thought you didn't remember him. Oh, yes, I remembered. You didn't give that impression. One should never let the enemy know when he's being observed. The enemy? All right, then, dear friend. Enjoy yourself? Mm-hmm. I think so. I'd like these affairs better, I think, if I didn't have to dress up for them. Or work the following day. Be warm enough. Yes, thank you, Hard. Love me, Mary.
its more ponderous and bulky worth is friendship. But at the tip top, there hangs by unseen film an orbed drop of light. And that is love. Wake up, darling. We're here. I wasn't really asleep. Happy New Year, Bates. Thank you, ma'am. Good night, Bates. Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Same to you, sir. Good night, my dear. Good night, Hart. Oh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I shall never love anyone as much as I love you. Then why won't you marry me? No, Stephen. I don't quite know. Even if I did, I... I don't think you could possibly understand. If two people really love each other, they want to be together. They want to belong to each other. Stephen, I want to belong to myself. Then your life will be a failure. Dear Stephen, don't be angry with me. I can't help myself. <laughs> but why can't there be love without this clutching and this gripping and this... Attention, please. For passengers for Berlin, please report to customs and immigration immediately. I'll be back Thursday, I think. I'll cable you anyway. Yes, do. The luggage has gone through, Mr. Justin. I brought his extra scarf in case it was cold. Thank you, Miss Lee. Tell me, my dear, will you go down to the country or will you stay in town? Oh, stay in town, I think. I'm not sure. Goodbye. Enjoy yourself. Goodbye, Howard. Have a good trip. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Layton. The stain is decolorized with 5% sulfuric acid and washed with potash alum and methylene blue. You can see the bacilli and terminal spores quite clearly. Have a look. I might get away to the country, Joan, for a few days, after all. I don't know. <laughs> Good, night. Good night, Mary. Thank you so much. Good night, Bill.
Hello. Yes. Who is it, please? Just a moment. This is Justin. Yes? You're wanted on the telephone. Oh, who is it? A Mr. Stratton. <laughs> Stephen, what a surprise. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. It was such a funny thing, I just happened to see your number in the phone book. Yes, yes, wasn't it? I expect you're terribly busy, but I wondered if... When? Well, yes, I think I am. I'm not sure. I'm just going to look in my diary. Yes, that will be fine. Oh, just a moment. Saturday. Yes, that will be wonderful. Hello, Mary. Come in. Am I late? Not a bit. The taxi men had trouble finding they me. They always do. It's a bit out of the way. In there. They've changed the name of the street. We had to ask a policeman in the end. Oh, Stephen, what an attractive room. Do you like it? Hmm. That's the comfortable chair. What would you like to drink? Whatever you're having. Sherry? Hmm. Fine. I didn't think you'd be able to come. I thought you might be away for the weekend. I nearly didn't phone. Well, I'm glad you did. Lunch is rather difficult for me during the week. During term, anyway. Thank you, Stephen. Well... Lunch is nearly ready. I'll just have a look at it. You don't mean you're cooking the lunch? Certainly. I'm a wonderful cook. But can't I help? No, you drink your sherry and make yourself comfortable. You're still a very unexpected person, Stephen. How do you mean? Do all university lecturers cook? Only the biologists. <laughs> Are these all your things? Yes. They're well arranged. Did you do it? Yes. I never knew you had this photograph of me. Oh, that. What was so funny, I wonder? Me, I expect. But <laughs> well, let me at least carry something. No, no. You sit down. Oh, Stephen. It looks wonderful. Yes, I must say. It does look rather good, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, I've so enjoyed this. I hope this coffee is going to be all right. I haven't used this thing much. It looks all right. Anyway, it smells like coffee. You still have all your books mixed up, Stephen. Sherlock Holmes has got in amongst the Aristotle. Oh, has he? There are some books of yours here. So I've noticed. I remember this one. Which? What you're doing with it, I don't know. You gave it to me for Christmas once. Black? Please. In the beginning, God gave to every people a cup of clay. And from this cup, they drank their life. Some things take years to understand, don't they? It's two sugars, isn't it? Yes, please. Do you have a play now, Stephen? Very quietly and for my own private satisfaction. From the music they love, you shall know the texture of men's souls. Do you remember that, too? Of course. You wrote that to me in a letter once. 
I copied it out of a book of Galsworthy's to impress you. I knew that. Did you? I liked it all the same. Silly, the things we do when we're young. Yes. How we talked about all the things I was going to do in life. I was to conquer the world. Do you remember? A knight in shining armor. Well, I really believed I could be. What were the things I was never to be? Grey and grubby. Fat. Dull. And there was something else. Respectable. Yes, that is it. It's getting dark very early, isn't it? We've had a very long lunch. You'll see the street lights coming on across the park soon. I ought to be going. When I came in the other night, it looked wonderful from here. There was some coloured flood lighting on a building. It made quite a glow in the sky. I stood and watched it for a time and began to think of all sorts of things I'd forgotten. What things? Things about you. Until the other night, I thought I'd forgotten everything. Now, I remember everything. So do I. You see what it was. We knew each other so well that suddenly it seemed as if the intervening years hadn't existed. When he could get away, we met for lunch in the week. But Saturday and Sunday were all ours. Those were wonderful days. We'd done this before, years ago, but as the days went by, new things began to happen. Little things. I'd never really known the pleasure of walking arm in arm with a man before. Everybody does it. To me, it was new. It all seemed so perfectly natural that I suppose it was easy not to think of the consequences. We were happy, and, and that seemed to make it all right. At least for a time. I've been thinking. Yes, I know. We have to, don't we? Not just yet. Reichsbank. Notes on my discussions with Piranha, very important there. And here are my comments on his real status. Here's some stuff about our own Berlin office. I haven't read that. All right, Miss Layton, that's a lot. Will you get it all straightened out for me, please? I'm supposed to get my report in the Treasury by tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Justin. Well, darling, what have you been doing? Did you go down to the country? No, I thought I'd go down this week if you still weren't back. It didn't look as if I were ever going to get away yesterday. Made any definite plans? Only for tonight. I'm going to the theatre with Stephen Stratton. Oh. Have you been seeing anything of him? No. More tea? I haven't finished this yet. What's the show? Well, oh, that musical comedy at the royalty. First Love, I think it's called. I would like some more now.
You don't mind my going, do you, Hart? Of course not. I have to do that report anyway. What a bore for you. Yes. Who else have you been seeing? Oh, just the usual people. Sounds like a bore for you. Oh, no. After all, it is my responsibility, too. No. No, Stephen, it's... it's wrong somehow. I've, I've got to do this myself. Um, shall we dance? It doesn't seem fair. Yes. Oh, it's fairer to him. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. It'd be terribly humiliating for him if you were there. Yes, yes, I see that. I'll be all right. Really, I will. When will you? Another occasion? Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you, Rita. Just bring the bill, please. When will you tell him? Tonight? I'm not sure. I shall know the right moment when it comes. You mustn't worry. I shall worry, all the same. I know exactly what he'll say. It's what he said before. That our love, yours and mine, wasn't what I wanted, not in my heart. And that I could never stand really belonging to someone. I shall belong to you. Yes, Justin. But he's left them behind. Yes. They're stalls, row D, numbers 24 and 25. Yes. And you'll let her have them if she asks. Thank you so much. And goodbye. All right, let's get on, shall we? Where was I? The president said. Yes. The president said that while the establishment of very low rates of interest by the right bank would not necessarily keep the rate of investment up to the rate of saving in a free market, the restrictions imposed by the regime had ensured a margin of safety in this respect. He explained that since other means have been found of stabilizing internal price levels, the effect of the natural market had been largely neutralized. Throughout this conversation with him, I had the impression that his earlier protestations had been quite insincere. I think I'll go on with this in the morning, Miss Leighton. Very well, Mr. Justin. Shall I do what you've given me so far? No, I'll leave it till tomorrow. Is there anything else? Nothing, thank you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Justin.
Is that you, Mary? Yes. Thank you, Stephen. I enjoyed it immensely. Good night, Mary. Good night, Stephen. We can't let you go like that, Stratton. Won't you come in? I don't think I will, thank you. My taxi's waiting. Well, paid off. You'll get another at the corner. Come in and have a drink. Yes, do, Stephen. All right. I won't be a minute. How much do I owe you? Three bob on the clock, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me take your coat. Thank you. Mary will join us in a minute. I expect she's told you I've been away in Germany and Italy for the last week or yes, so. Yes, she did. Did you have a good trip? I wouldn't call it good. I spent most of the time with members of the German and Italian governments. Interesting, of course. It must have been. But I think a taste for intrigue is an acquired thing. Don't you? Do sit down. What are you going to have? Whiskey and soda? Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Yes, fine. Shall we have some music? Help yourself to a cigarette, Joe. Oh, thank you. Where did you dine? Oh, that French place with the mad waiter. I do wish they wouldn't keep sending us irises. I've told them about it before. It's so spiky and unfriendly. How was the show? Fair. Good seats? Very. Sit down, now. I'll get you a drink. Small one. Well, as I was about to say when Mary came in, I think the most striking thing about the German people is their pathetic faith in themselves. Why do you call it pathetic? Well, the belief of the muscular in their own strength is always pathetic, don't you think? Ice? Uh, don't get up. Personally, Stratton, I think there's a fault in the Teutonic mind which shows up whenever they have access to great power. It's a sort of romantic hysteria. Well, perhaps not romantic, but a hysteria anyway, which seems to convert them from a collection of sober, intelligent, rather sentimental individuals into a dangerous mob. A mob which can believe that a big enough lie is not a lie at all. But truth. Stephen, it's getting late. Oh, yes. let him finish his drink. Stephen, please, will you go now? Aren't you losing your head, dear? What is it, Mary? Hard nose if we went to the theatre. I see. I'm sorry you had to find out in this way. I think you'd better know the truth. Thank you. Mary and I have always loved each other, and we still do. The mistake was made years ago. And now you want to put it right? Stratton, it's quite a shock to find that your wife's in love with another man. When you've long believed that your marriage was happy and worthwhile, the shock is even greater. Stephen, will you go now? All sorts of strange ideas come into your head. You even think of killing. Stephen, please, will you go now? I... I want to talk to Howard alone. I think Mary's right. You had better go and leave you here. You'd better go, Stephen. I should be all right. Very well. When shall I see you? I don't know. 
Get out! I can't think for the moment. Good night, Stephen. Good night. Well? Good morning, Good morning, sir. I'd like to see Mr. Justin. Will you come in, sir? Do you mind uh, waiting a moment, sir? I must apologize for the state of the room. Good morning, Mrs. Stratton. Good morning. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Justin isn't at home. Is there anything I can do? Is Mr. Justin in? I'm afraid he's very busy. Can I do anything? It's a private matter and rather important. I'm sorry, Mr. Stratton. It's quite impossible just now. I see. Is there any message I could give? No, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Stratton. Good morning. All right, let's get on. All right, Miss Layton, I shan't want you for a moment. Why have you come here? Haven't you received my wife's letter? Yes, I have. Did you really imagine I wouldn't see through it? What do you mean, exactly? She didn't write that letter herself. You dictated it. Oh. Well, didn't you? As a matter of fact, I didn't. Now, listen to me, Stratton. I didn't invite you here, and I didn't want to discuss the matter with you. But since you are here, you're going to know my point of view. Sit down. Hello? No. Tell him I'll see him in New York. And please don't put any more calls through. You see, if I thought that you and Mary could make any sort of a life together, I might feel very differently about this, but I don't think you could. How can you possibly judge? You say you love Mary. Yes, I always have. Well, you may love her, but you don't know her. I do. Our marriage has been very successful until now. It's based on freedom and understanding and a very deep affection. It's the marriage Mary and I both wanted. Your love is the romantic kind. The kind that makes big demands. Nearness, belonging, fulfillment, and priority over everything else. That isn't the kind Mary really wants. Although you almost persuaded her that it was. Don't you see that you two together are dangerous? I'm not blaming either of you. You can't help it and you couldn't have changed it. You just have to keep away from one another. And in future, I'm going to see to it that you do. I see your point of view. But it's a cold, bloodless banker's point of view, and I don't believe a word of it. We're human beings, not joint stock companies, and you can't move us around as if we were. Mary's going with me to Washington. We're leaving tonight. 
I believe you're afraid. I am. I want to see her. All right. Are you all right? Yes. I tried to speak to you on the telephone, but they wouldn't let me. And when I came round to see you, they said you were out. Yes, I know. I was expecting you to telephone me. And when I got that letter... I shouldn't have written it. I shouldn't have left you with him. It was best. He seems to think you're staying with him. I am staying, Stephen. I shouldn't have written the letter. It was a cowardly thing to do. I should have told you. Told me what? That I couldn't come with you. Less than 24 hours ago, you told me that you loved me. You meant it, too. Yes, Stephen, I did. Do you remember once I asked you how you could love me and yet marry someone else? Yes, I remember. Your marriage was bound to be a failure. It hasn't been, Stephen. It really hasn't. But it is now. And you know it. No. I'm not a very good person, Stephen. I wanted your love, and I wanted Hart's affection and the security he could give me. I can give you security, too, and more than affection. You don't really know me at all. My love isn't worth very much. It's all I want. It's all I'll ever want. No, Stephen, don't. Don't, please. I can't come with you. I can't. Will you always want to belong to yourself? That was nine years ago. Yet even after nine years, I could still go to sleep thinking of him. Yes, I wonder what I'd have done if I'd known he was only a few feet away. I suppose that if fate had been kind and gentle, we would never have met again. But fate is not kind and gentle. It sent us together to a sunlit lake and snow-capped mountains and a holiday in Switzerland. Ah, bonjour, madame. Bonjour. Your miss is there. Merci bien. Au revoir. 
morning, Jen. Good morning, Mrs. Justin. There's a cable for you from Mr. Justin. He hopes to leave London today. Oh, good. Did you sleep well? Oh, yes, quite. I think it's going to be very warm. I felt it was going to be a beautiful day, and it is. Oh, bonjour, madame. Bonjour. It's his first real holiday for years, and he has to spend the first two days of it working. It's that Royal Commission again. Is the coffee good? I don't know. I had tea. Oh. Dropped out of the sky. What on earth are you doing here? And you, when did you arrive? Last night, very late. Just a gleam of light and a sleepy porter to greet me. And now I meet you. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is Miss Layton, my husband's secretary. Yes, how do you do? Professor Stratton. It is Professor now, isn't it? Yes. How do you do? We haven't actually been introduced. Have your coffee with us, Stephen. Well, I'm you. <laughs> I'm glad you asked me first. <laughs> <laughs> Merci. We arrived yesterday, too. Have you been here before, Professor Stratton? Once or twice. I used to go climbing before the war. And what are you doing here now, Stephen? Well, I'm playing truant. There are several places in Switzerland I ought to be in, but this doesn't happen to be one of them. <laughs> the university towns, Professor? Mostly. I always think they have a special charm of their own, don't you? Yes. Still, I expect you get tired of universities. Well, not at all. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll go and answer these cables. All right, Jen. I suppose something like this was bound to happen. It's been a long time. Nine years. I'm glad it's happened in such a lovely place. It might have happened in London, the station or the street. Do you know the most extraordinary thing? Hmm? I was thinking about you last night. And Stephen, I too. I wonder if we both... I'm being silly. You haven't changed, Stephen. But you look tired. Your eyes are tired. Have you been working too hard? Not really. But I couldn't resist a day off in the mountains. Couldn't I come with you? That would be breaking the rules, wouldn't it? But why? This is none of our planning. No, no, I suppose it isn't. I've wanted to meet you like this and talk about things. Oh, 10,000 times. Stephen, this is the only chance we're ever likely to have for the rest of our lives. The sun is shining and the day is just beginning. You, you can't just go off for yourself. I won't let you.
When did you get married? During the war. Who is she? You met her once at New Year's Eve. Yes, I remember. Do you realize, Stephen, that we're practically strangers? I suppose we are. <laughs> How did you know I was married? Oh, I managed to hear about you from all sorts of people. When the new telephone directory came out after the war, I even looked you up in it. <laughs> we're going up into the cloud. I've been curious about you, too. I've seen pictures of you in magazines with your husband. You'd better put your jersey on. Thank you. How is he? Hard. Oh, well and successful. It's curious, isn't it? You look like a ghost. It'll clear in a minute. I heard he was going into politics. He may do. We've talked about it quite a lot. You know, Stephen, these days we're closer together and much happier than we used to be. I'm very glad. You have a family, haven't you? Mm -hmm. A boy and a girl. How old are they? He's six, she's three. Are they like you? The boy is a bit, I think. What's his name? Peter. They're all on holiday at the sea at the moment. He's quite a good swimmer for his age. Pat taught him last summer when I was in America. They made it a surprise for me when I got back. You're very happy, aren't you, Stephen? I think I must be. It's clearing. Look, that's where we make for. Up there. Wine. They're nice people, the Swiss. Dressing, too. Shall I do the salad? Yes. What are you thinking about? I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming nonsense. Well, come and have lunch. It's all ready. I always knew we'd meet again one day, but I never imagined it would be quite like this. Why not? Well, it wasn't in a station or a street exactly, but it was still somewhere crowded and bustling. Why crowd it? I don't know. I suppose after what happened last time, I thought it would be easier that way. 
Was it difficult this morning? Of course not. It was wonderful. Is this difficult? No. It's probably very indiscreet, but it's certainly not difficult. We are very pleased to see you again, Mr. Justine. Thank you, Mario. Have you had your luncheon? Yes, thank you. Your key, sir. Number seven. I'll have your luggage sent straight up. Good. Hello, Miss Lady. Good afternoon, Mr. Justin. We didn't expect you until much later. I was lucky with the plane. Where's my wife? She's out having lunch, I think. Oh. Where? She said something about a day in the mountains. Did she say what time she'll be back? No, but she'll be in for dinner. Splendid. Are you going to be in town? Yes, I think so. Just back to the hotel as quick as you can. Oui, monsieur. We'll advise your new position as soon as I'm able. Yes, that will do. Sincerely yours. Now, I suppose I'd better deal with that Arnold business. Tiresome man. Yes, Mr. Justin. My dear Arnold, they're quite extraordinary, these new binoculars. Coated lenses, you know. Marvelous. And whatever sentimental value you may place upon the shares, their real value is purely nominal. You speak of goodwill. No, don't say that. But just a moment. This is fascinating. Let's see. Ah, I don't think I have to remind you what a doubtful quantity goodwill can be in a business of this sort. I think you know me well enough to understand that I would never allow myself to be influenced in this or any other matter by purely financial considerations. Now, where was I? In this or in any other matter, by purely irrational considerations. Financial considerations. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Uh, paragraph. I'm sure you will have already refreshed your memory from our earlier correspondence on the subject. In any case, I do not propose to refer to it again. Stop. The whole matter must now be handed over to our legal advisers and accountants. Dash. They're interested only in facts. Very sincerely yours. Charming. Is that my wife? I think it is. Good. Yes, it is. Will you excuse me for a moment? Number six, as quick as you can. Oh, oui, monsieur, tout de suite. Will you be in time? Yes, the station's only ten minutes across the lane. Could I have my key, please? Yes, sir. Excusez-moi, monsieur. Don't wait. I wonder how long it'll be before we meet again. 
I was wondering that, too. Will it be another nine years? I hope not. I've loved seeing you and hearing your voice. And... Voila, monsieur. Thank you. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I'm glad you're happy. Goodbye, Mary. Longing to see you again. Professor Stratton? Yes? That's a petition for divorce.
don't quite remember what I did or which way I went. There are some nightmares that you don't wake from that are reality. I think I went into some sort of restaurant. Threepence, please. There was a man who kept asking me for money. Threepence! I don't really remember. All I could think of was that I'd done this thing to Stephen. I had to do something. I went home and then remembered that it wasn't a home, but only a hotel bedroom, and that I couldn't sleep. After that, I started to walk faster and faster, racking my brains for things to say to the lawyer that hadn't been said already. He had to do something to stop it. Something, anything. It didn't matter what. He had to. Had to. Aren't you losing your head, Mrs. Justin? No, I'm trying to keep it. I tell you, this thing has got to be stopped. I'm sorry, Mrs. Justin, but I think you'd better face the facts. You see, your husband isn't suing for divorce and claiming these damages as an idle gesture. He's fighting to win. And he's got a strong case. But it's absurd. The earlier associations and the adjoining rooms... But I tell you, we didn't know about the adjoining rooms. Yes, 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 but uh, nobody's just going to believe that you didn't. No, I can see that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was unfair. Well, uh, what am I to do? What can I say to Professor Stratton? I hope you're not thinking of meeting him. Certainly I'm meeting him. I telephoned him at the university this morning. It's most unwise of you. I have to see him. I have to. Don't you see this? This can mean everything to him. It's... His home, his job, his happiness, everything. I can't just not see him. This is just him. I suggest you don't keep the appointment. I was afraid you weren't coming. You're crying. Yes. It's all right, Stephen. It's all right. There'll be no divorce. I've... I've just seen the lawyer. How to stop the case. Mary. Let's... let's go into the park. Well brought up women aren't... Really supposed to smoke in the street. It's all right. This isn't the street. Did he give the lawyer any explanation? No, I... I suppose he must have decided to believe me, after all. That's really all I know about it. You've had a rotten time, haven't you? Don't be too nice to me, Stephen. I don't deserve it. It wasn't your fault. Yes, it was, in a way. All my life, Stephen, I've... I've been hard. I've been a little hard. No, you haven't. You... You are happy, aren't you? Yes, I am. 
What about you? I just wanted to make sure. You haven't answered my question. What about you? Are you going back to him? I... I don't quite know. I... I don't know what I'm going to do yet. He... He's been away. I... I think he's coming back today. I remember in Switzerland, you tell me that you two are closer together than you'd ever been. I wonder what... what made him start this action and then give it up so suddenly. It doesn't sound like him. Not the way I remember him, anyway. Are you quite sure? Stephen, oughtn't you to telephone your wife and tell her it's all right? There's a call box over there. Yes. I won't be a minute. Stephen, I have to go. Oh. We'd better say goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. Think of me sometimes. Yes, I will. I will. What is it, Smith? I had to see you. Well, come in. I only got back today. I was held up in Madrid. Yes, Joan, tell me. Did you have a good trip? Yes, yes, I think so. Several people asked after you. No. Oh. Will you have coffee or anything? No, thank you. I saw the lawyer. I know I shouldn't have come here, really. Oh, that's all right. Aren't you going to sit down? No, I... Howard, I've come to ask you something. Is there anything you need? I told Maxwell to see if there was. No, it's... it's not that. I've really come to appeal to you. Oh. It's about Stephen. Yes? You know, Howard, in Switzerland, Whatever you may think, however bad it may have looked to you, there was nothing wrong. I think you'd better go. Hard, please listen to me. I'll go away. I'll never bother you again. I'll do anything. Listen. I knew you didn't marry me because you loved me. But because you liked me. And the money and the position that went with me. I didn't mind that. Because I liked those things too, and I thought we'd enjoy them together. I didn't expect love from you. Or even great affection. I'd have been well satisfied with kindness and loyalty. You gave me love and kindness and loyalty. But it was the love you'd give a dog, and the kindness you'd give a beggar, and the loyalty of a bad servant. Perhaps it's my fault. It probably is. I wanted this marriage, but now I don't. So I'm getting rid of it, with the rest of the things I don't want. 
You were my wife, and you made me hate and despise myself, and I don't want you anymore. Do you understand? I don't want anything from you. I don't even want your gratitude. I just want to be left in peace. Now get out! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean all that. I lost my head. It's unfair. You see, there was one thing I didn't bargain for in our relationship. And I didn't know it until a few weeks ago. It's a curious sort of apology to make for behaving so badly now. But I... I fell in love with you. Mary. Hey, miss, ticket. Ticket. Go home now. 